Hi everyone, and welcome back to The Neighborhood. I've got the new Thea Audio Ghost in the house for review. I haven't been a huge fan of any Thea Audio products in the past, but can they reverse my opinion with a headphone rather than an IEM? Let's get into it. While I'm aware that Thea Audio produced the Wraith about a year ago, my general understanding is that it wasn't super well received, and I actually never got a chance to hear that set. So these are the first Thea Audio headphones to have donned my ears. The Wraith appears to have been Thea Audio's attempt at a Sundara clone, and this headphone, the Ghost, appears to be their attempt at a Sennheiser HD600 series clone, at least at first glance. So it goes without saying that this is a single dynamic, open back headphone with an oval cup. But unlike a Sennheiser, which is comprised of mostly plastic and only some metal, the build here appears to be almost entirely out of plastic, aside from the ear pads, headband padding, a few screws, and some components of the driver. Notably, the driver housings are plastic, the yokes are plastic, and the adjustment brackets are plastic. I also suspect that the structural elements of the headband are also plastic, but I was not going to destroy the headband itself to find out for sure, as it is nicely wrapped in a comfortable protein leather with a spongy memory foam padding. But put more plainly, the build here is on the cheaper side, and compared to something like a Sennheiser HD 600 series and even an HD 500 series, the quality of the plastic construction here appears to be thinner, less robust, and therefore potentially less likely to stand up to possible abuse. Perhaps the A-Audio suspected this as well, because they did include a nice thin-lined black woven hard shell case in the package here. This more slender structure might also appeal to some buyers, however, as the Ghost feels much lighter on the head and induces less muscle fatigue from wear, not only due to its lesser weight, but also its more limited clamp. For my head structure, I found the clamp to be much less intense compared to my Sennheiser HD58X Jubilee and HD66X. Like Sennheiser cans, the pads on the Ghost are velour, but uniquely are a bit taller and provide a tad bit more space for your ears inside the cup. My ears don't touch the driver of the Ghost and feel further away from the driver than they do on Sennheiser cans. The pads on the Ghost are also removable and affixed to the Ghost in a non-proprietary manner, so one can use a greater variety of aftermarket oval pads than Sennheiser headphones, which use proprietary plastic rings to affix and mount their pads. I did try my pair of Brainwave Sheepskin HM5 pads, and while they fit and were comfortable, they produced a sound that was just a tad bit too intense, which wore on me over the course of longer listening sessions. As a result of this outcome, I was tempted to order a set of the newer Pro Stock or perforated HM5 pads, but ultimately decided against it so as to not delay this review. Perhaps someone from the community will give these pad options a try on the Ghost and tell us if they, or others for that matter, work well with this headphone. Make sure to leave your opinions in the comment section below. Another win for the build of the Ghost is that it uses a rather standardized dual jack, dual pole, 3.5mm cable. So like aftermarket pads, aftermarket cables will be readily available for the Ghost. This is a good thing, because the ribbon cable that comes in the box with the Ghost is pretty much just straight garbage. It's not only a bit short and shabbily made, but also doesn't produce good audio quality when used with the Ghost. Switching to a balanced silver-plated copper cable greatly improved the clarity of the Ghost in my testing. And for those that may be interested, I also tested single-pull dual 3.5mm jack cables as well, but these weren't wired properly for the Ghost, so only dual pull, dual 3.5mm cables will work. Regarding price, these pre-sold at $129, but at the time of this review, I'm uncertain what the exact cost of these will be to the general public when they are ultimately released. Their website was taken down recently, most likely in order to update this information, and with specific regard to the Ghost, price will likely be a major consideration here for many, given both its build and its sound. 
I mean, the 6XX can routinely be had for around $200, and the 560S and 58X are around $150. So let's get into that sound. Are these a competent clone capable of keeping up with Sennheisers such as the 58X, 560S, 6XX, or even the much more expensive 660S? Well, the strange answer is both yes and no. First of all, resolution and clarity out of the box is slightly worse than any of the aforementioned competition from Sennheiser. There is some notable grain and slight fuzziness that is present in comparison, especially with the stock cable, but like I've already mentioned, this does mostly clear up with a simple cable replacement. I'll place a few links to some that I tested with in the description below for those that are interested. If you want the best audio quality with the Ghost, you're going to want to pick up a new cable, so calculate that into the additional cost to the overall price of this headphone when making your decision on these. But with the replacement cable, resolution is actually fairly decent for the cost, and pretty close to its Sennheiser cousins, even if it never quite measured up to them in the end in this department. Timbre and tonal characteristics are also generally less neutral and significantly warmer than most considered to be in the Sennheiser 600 series line. Out of the collection of Sennheiser's reference prior, the Ghost's tonality is closest to the 660S. Overall, I seriously get major 660S vibes on this one. This is a decently warm and mildly dark sound signature for audiophiles that prefer analog warmth and relaxed enjoyability over reference. Vocals and other sonics from the mid-range are still very forward, but never come across as harsh or aggressive to my ears. People drawn to a sound where vocals stand out and stand forward will likely be attracted to the ghost, as the human voice is certainly front and center in the presentation without sibilance or unnaturalness. Still, the mid-range is less even here, though, than something like the 58X, as there appears to be less elevations in the early mid-range and additional elevations in the later mid-range, continuing on into the treble. Still, I think those who found the 560S to be too bright or aggressive in certain portions of its frequency response will ultimately come to be soothed by the Ghost's more mellow atmosphere, especially in its treble region. The later treble certainly sounds rolled off, and I do hear less micro details here than from any of my Sennheiser cans. However, there is a haunting air quality to the sound of the ghost as a whole, which can't and shouldn't be ignored. The bass on the ghost is also somewhat unique for this type of open back headphone, relying on its low bass and sub bass to drive the bottom end sound forward. Out of the box, the mid bass and portions of the upper bass were lacking, but this seemed to smooth out mostly with a day or two's use. Even so, the sub bass and the low bass are still the star of the show for the ghost here at least in terms of their inclusion, as sub-bass and low-bass are definitely not the guiding force of the Sennheiser 600 series in my experience. Out of the headphones mentioned prior, the 560S was probably the most bass capable, but that headphone relies more on a mid-bass bump than the Ghost does, and it's also significantly rolled from the low-bass down in comparison to the Ghost, which has low-end warmth with limited, if any, bloom. So to my ears, the low-end response of the Ghost is somewhat warm, but mostly natural overall. That is, for most music. But the Ghost did struggle at times with genres such as rap and EDM, which might require a more intensive low-end presence on particular tracks. On such songs, right out of the box, the driver on the Ghost kind of just fell apart, and I was hearing audio distortion and or clipping. But after some use, now it just audibly underperforms on such songs every now and then. If one is a bass head, changing the pads may give you the desired outcome that you're looking for, but this is not a bassy headphone in terms of its presence levels with the stock pads. It just has more information in the lowest registries than other headphones of this style might. Negatively, the bass does lack some detail, is rather one notish, and somewhat fuzzy in its character lacking definition. The soundstage isn't huge, but it's a tad more spacious than the 6XX and 58X and a bit more 3D in its presentation. Still, it's not as large as the 560S and more intimate sounding than that headphone as well, which presents its stage to its listener as further out in space. I'd describe the presentation of the Ghost as rather circumoral, 
with good depth to the image at times, especially on more simplistic sounding tracks. On busier songs, its imaging could blur, becoming cluttered and presenting as rather claustrophobic. This was particularly bad right out of the box with the stock cable, but again improved with use and a cable swap. Peripheral vocals and other details were notably less clear than those in the center image, but not offensively so. In general, separation is not a strength of the Ghost. Many have knocked the 58X for struggling with separation, and the Ghost exhibits similar difficulties with this. Transients also come forth a tad bit too forthright and die off a tad too quickly for my liking. Transient reproduction will likely be acceptable to many listeners at this price point, however. With regard to power handling, though, these are a surprising 60 ohms and 91 dB of sensitivity. Despite this rating, which generally suggests that the Ghost should be able to be powered by almost anything, I got the best results with its 40mm Sapphire Dynamic Driver with more power rather than less. For example, the best results with the Ghost came from powering them with my Dark Voice, the THX AAA 789 via its balanced output, and the Gold Note DS10 Plus's higher impedance single-ended headphone output. I also got favorable outcomes with the Bravo Audio Ocean and the Giselli Labs Archel Pro, two amps which certainly don't lack in the power department. Driving them with dongles off of my phone was a bit of a mixed bag. The Rhodium DAC by Periodic Audio and the Hibby FC3 were a tad bit too thin for my liking, but by no means offensive. Still, the Truth Ear Shio performed the best off of its balanced output and was a bit richer to my ears. I also preferred it off the balanced output of the BTR3K compared to the single-ended one. In summation, the more power the better with the Ghost, despite its low ohm and sensitivity rating. So should one invest in the Thea Audio Ghost? Well, I think that really depends. At the approximate price of $129 plus, the Ghost certainly has a lot of competition, including the Sennheiser 600 series headphones it appears to be a clone of. Though it's a more comfortable and lighter weight build than these headphones, it's also not likely to stand up to abuse in the same way. It does come with a nice hard shell case, however, which separates it from its competition, but this is also somewhat of a wash from a price perspective, as most will want to buy a new cable to get the best sound quality out of the Ghost as well. Furthermore, the Ghost is also not nearly as reference, and it delivers more of a warmed over tone and feel to its presentation, which is closest to the Sennheiser 660S. Which brings me to the biggest argument for the Ghost. The original 660S is $300 at the time of making this review. Likely on sale even, because Sennheiser is poised to release a 300 ohm update soon to this previously 150 ohm headphone. If pre-sales are any indication of the final cost of the Ghost, it likely will be half the price of the 660S even when it's on sale. While it may not perform exactly like a 660S in terms of its mid-range and treble performance, it's certainly a similar feel and shares tonal characteristics. It may even have a better bass than the original 660S as the Ghost notably has less sub-bass roll-off for sure. So if you're in the market for more sub-bass than the current Sennheiser lineup, or looking for similar tonal characteristics to the 660S at a cheaper price, then the Thea Audio Ghost might just be for you. Thanks to Linsoul for sending the Ghost into the channel for review. I'll place a link to their website for the Ghost in the description below. And make sure to show the channel some love and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you in the next one. And with that, I'm out for now.